Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about the factors which affect the capacitance of a capacitor. So put down today's title, it's going to be the factors which affect the capacitance of a capacitor. This will be in the A-level uh, syllabus, guys, in the second year. Uh, sometimes you find it in the field section, but sometimes a lot of schools like to start off teaching it straight away. And before we move on, guys, make sure that you like and subscribe to my videos just to keep me going. And make sure that you've watched the other videos in my playlist before watching this. So obviously watch it in order, otherwise it just won't make sense. Right, so we'll just have a recap of what a capacitor actually is. So a capacitor is going to be this. Here we have the parallel plate capacitor. So we have two plates, both of them attached to a power supply. Yeah, and in between, guys, then there's, there's no connecting bit in between, guys, so there's free space in between. They're both made out of metal. And the reason why is because obviously we're going to be able to store charge onto that capacitor. So capacitors, if you've forgotten, they're used to store charge. So capacitors are used to store charge here. Right, so let's look at the positive terminal right now. This one is positive. The electrons on this wire are dragged towards it. So the electrons on this wire are dragged towards it. Therefore, leaving the plate now, if all the electrons on that side of the wire move towards a positive terminal, therefore that plate will now become positively charged because it will have a deficiency of electrons, because all the electrons have left it. And what about the opposite side? If the opposite side is negative, all the electrons upon this side of the wire are repelled onto it. So the electrons are repelled onto it, guys. So this one becomes negatively charged over here. Yeah, so look, we can store charge on the capacitor here. Okay, so what factors affect the capacitance? What, so what factors can actually affect how much charge I can store? Well, there are a couple of things. Let's look at the first one. The first one is the area of the plates, guys. Right, so I've drawn two separate scenarios here. As you can see on the one on the left-hand side, we've got a surface area which is smaller than that on the right. So let's call this one the area of the first one. So area A1 over here is obviously an area 2 over there. We can say that the area of the first capacitor is less than the area of the second capacitor. Make sense? Yeah, it's less than that one over there. The separation between them is the same. Okay, and today's question is going to be the following. Which capacitor can store the most charge? Is it the one with the most area or the least? Which one do you think? Hopefully we can have an idea that because there's more area, I can actually store more charge. So look, on this one I can store four. But this one, there's more space for me to build up electrons here, so I can store more charge on here. Right, so there we go. As you can see, I can store more charge because there is more space available. Right, so that can lead us to the following statement, that capacitance is proportional to the area of the plate. Okay, so the greater the area of the plate, the greater the capacitance, guys. And obviously the capacitance is the ability to store charge per unit volt. So the greater the area of the plate, the greater the capacitance. That's the first bit. Right, what about another factor? All right, so what about the following scenario? So now let's look at the distance between the plates. I've drawn two diagrams here. Both of them, the areas are the same. So look, the area of the first one and area two. Okay, I can't draw it properly, but we can say that the area of the one is equal to area two. So area one is equal to area two here. But the thing that I'm changing now is the separation between the plates. So this is the distance over there. And so this is D1. And over there, this one is D2. Right, we can clearly see from the diagram that D2 is greater than D1. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, how do you think that will affect the capacitance? Look at the first scenario, the one on the left. We clearly can see that when they are close together, they can influence each other because the, if the bottom plate is negatively charged it will obviously repel the electrons on the top plate further away so this being negatively charged over here at the bottom obviously will repel other electrons further away on the top so electrons are going to be quicker to move from the top making that terminal more and more positive so the closer they are the more of an influence they have between each other so the closer the plates are the more the influence they can have on each other Therefore, the more charge that can be stored. So the closer they are, the more charge that can be stored. Right, so this can lead us to the following statement. The capacitance is inversely proportional to the separation. Okay, so there we go. Over here, capacitance is inversely proportional to the separation. Because the further they are away, the less influence they have on each other. 
Okay, so the third factor now, the third factor is going to be the dielectric or the insulator between the plates. Right, so I've just simplified the diagram, guys. I haven't drawn it 3D. Uh, you can clearly see that this is still the power supply here. So this is still the supply. And the other one is going to be the capacitor. So the dielectric is simply this. If I put an insulating material within it, let's say I put an insulating material, so this is an insulator between the plates. Insulator between the plates. Do you think that will help the capacitor to store more charge or less? So if I put an insulating material in between the plate, is that going to store more charge or not? Right, so by having the insulating material in between the two plates, it enables the capacitor to store more charge. So we can store more charge when we put the insulator within it. Right, so the insulator, guys, is called a dielectric. So this is called a dielectric for the capacitor. This is called a dielectric. So if you see the word dielectric, it means the insulator for the capacitor here. Right, so some dielectrics are better than others, guys. So there's a range within them, guys. There's a range within them. Okay, so we can therefore say that the capacitance, guys, over here, the capacitance is proportional to, let's just say, the strength of the dielectric. Strength of dielectric. I know that doesn't look great right now, but we're going to combine them all together to get us a nice formula. Right, so three things we've been talking about so far. Number one, we've said capacitance is proportional to the area. So as you increase the area of the plates, the capacitance increases. Capacitance is also inversely proportional to the distance between them. As the distance gets larger, the capacitance gets lower. And last of all, the capacitance is proportional to the strength of the electric or the strength of the insulator. So now we can combine them all together. Okay, let's write them all down. So we know that C is proportional to A, and we know that C is inversely proportional to the distance between them, and we know that C is proportional to the strength of the dielectric. Well, this will lead us to the following formula then. So we can combine them all together. Let's say this one, then this one, then this one into the capacitance is equal to epsilon naught, epsilon r, A divided by D. Okay? where A is the area, D is a distance. Right, the other one we haven't covered so far is going to be this guy over here. This one over here. This is the relative permittivity. So this is the relative permittivity. And epsilon naught is going to be the permittivity of free space. Yeah, okay. So the relative permittivity, guys, that's usually a whole number. And it's determined by the dielectric. Right, so if your dielectric is a very good insulator, epsilon R, will be high. So epsilon R is high if a dielectric is a good insulator. And epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space because in between the two plates you've still got to take into account the permittivity of free space. And that will be given to you guys because that is a constant. So epsilon naught is equal to 8.9 times by 10 to the minus 12 farad meter. Okay? Uh, right, so that's it. So just make sure that you're able to use this uh, formula uh, when you're tackling questions. Obviously, you're going to be given it in the exam, but make sure you know where it comes from. Right, so the capacitance is equal to epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space, times by epsilon r, which is the relative permittivity, which is determined by your dielectric, and multiplied by the area, which is the area of the plates, divided by the separation between them. Okay, and then we looked at it at the start, guys, by drawing a couple of diagrams. So look, I drew the area. The greater the area, the more charge you could store. The greater the distance, the less influence they have on each other. And last of all, you put the insulator in, the more capacitance it can store as well. Okay, and that's it for another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you like and subscribe to my video to keep me going. Comment below if you have any thoughts or queries or you want me to explain anything anymore. I'll do my best to answer them. Ciao, ciao, goodbye, and good luck.